Welcome to the gene pool, Darwinium's most exclusive retreat. Looks like we're just in time for happy hour, but we're not here just to lounge in a space cabana. We're here to talk all things evolution. Now, you might hear the word evolution in self-help books or in video games about pocket monsters. But the scientific definition of evolution is a bit different than the colloquial meaning. So in this sketch, we're going to explain exactly how scientists define and measure evolution. In the simplest sense, evolution is a change in the gene pool of a population over time. Spoiler alert, that means the gene pool here on Darwinium is about to go through all sorts of changes. Ooh, I hope they put in a water slide. In order to measure changes in a population's gene pool, scientists compare allele frequencies, which are exactly what they sound like, a measure of how prevalent each allele is. As a reminder, alleles are different versions of the same gene that impact how the gene functions. Every allele is found at a specific locus, or location, on the chromosome. And for a locus that has two alleles in the population, the alleles are generally represented by the letters P and Q. Here at the gene pool, we're using a bottle of Pinot Noir and a bottle of Quagliano to represent allele frequencies. Classy. To calculate the frequency of an allele, you divide the number of copies of that allele in a population by the total number of copies of all alleles at that locus. For example, in a population of two diploid individuals, there are four total copies of every locus, because both individuals carry one locus on each of their two chromosomes. If one individual is heterozygous at a locus and one individual is homozygous dominant, there will be three copies of the dominant allele in the population, one from the heterozygote and two from the homozygote. This means the frequency of the dominant allele would be three out of four, or 75%. Because there's only one copy of the recessive allele, its frequency would be 1 out of 4, or 25%. Of course, in most populations, there are far more than two individuals, and often more than two alleles for a gene. So these calculations get a bit more complicated. Evolution occurs when the frequency of an allele changes over time. So in this tiny population of two, if they reproduce and the next generation consists of two heterozygotes, the frequency of both the dominant and recessive alleles will have changed to 50%. And ta-da, evolution. Note that the alleles in an individual cannot change. You get what you're born with. This means that by the scientific definition, only populations can evolve, not individuals. In order for evolution to occur, a population must experience at least one evolutionary process. In total, there are five of these processes, genetic drift, mutation, gene flow, natural selection, and non-random mating, which includes artificial and sexual selection. Unlike the other processes, non-random mating does not always change allele frequencies, but artificial and sexual selection are special cases where it does. Genetic drift occurs when allele frequencies change due to random chance. Genetic drift typically has a stronger impact on smaller populations where minor changes tend to be more influential. You can see that there's some allele frequency wine drifting at sea over here to represent these random changes in allele frequencies. Genetic mutations change allele frequencies by introducing new alleles to a population. Over here, you can see this mutant party of one changing up the gene pool by introducing a new rosé allele. Yikes, looks like she's heading for a rough morning. The next change to the gene pool comes from gene flow, which happens when individuals enter or exit a population, just like this allele wine flowing into the gene pool. Gene flow can introduce new alleles to one population from another, like this barrel of rosé, or make existing alleles, like this barrel of pinot, more or less frequent. Next, there's a banner for the selection games to remind us that natural selection also causes evolution by increasing the frequency of alleles that raise an organism's chance of surviving and reproducing. Over here at the bar, Artie, our sommelier da artificial selection, is mixing up a new batch of carefully selected allele frequencies. Artificial selection is a form of non-random mating that occurs when humans selectively breed organisms to make desired alleles more common. So any chance Artie can make me a glass of wine that tastes like a taco? Next, let's head over to the sexual selection cabanas to see what's going on. Oh, oh, yep, seems like we walked in on something here. I have a lot of questions about what's happening, but I think I'll have to save them for sketchy after dark. Sexual selection is a special form of natural selection that's also a form of non-random mating. Sexual selection occurs when individuals with certain alleles receive more mating opportunities than others. So the alleles that increase one's chance of reproducing become more common in subsequent generations. Which is to say that if all of humankind looks suspiciously like Zac Efron in 10,000 years, you'll know what happened. 
In this population, individuals clearly prefer mates who have similar alleles to their own. Arms flirting with arms and fins flirting with fins. Furthermore, it looks like individuals with the largest horns and fins get the most opportunities to mate. And you can bet that will change the allele frequencies at the gene pool. If this pattern goes on for long enough, we could even see some speciation. But that's a story for another day. Well, that's it for this evolutionary pool party. The gene pool experienced each of the five evolutionary processes. Genetic drift, mutation, gene flow, natural selection, and non-random mating. Specifically, sexual and artificial selection. You can bet some serious evolution happened, because the gene pool sure is looking different from when we started. Now, after all that wine, I need some pizza and a nap. Someone look up the best slice shop on Darwinium.